what's up guys and welcome back to part 20 of this Mercedes minibus campervan conversion so if you're new to the series everything that's been done on this conversion from stripping it all the way down to the bare chassis and building it back up to as you see now it's fully documented on the previous 19 episodes of my channel so if you haven't seen those already feel free to go back and have a flick through some of the previous episodes first so in today's episode I'm going to be starting to build up some of the kitchen area one of the previous episodes I started putting together some of the kitchen units and I've just been out now, bought a real wood worktop so I'm going to start assembling all this together I've got a brand new 12 volt compressor fridge that's just arrived as well so that's going to be getting fitted round about here as well behind the double seat I have an under counter mounted sink that's going to be getting fitted into this unit again with a brand new mixer tap as well and a brand new Thetford 4 burner gas glass top hob as well that's going to be getting mounted in the 50 mil unit as well so there's going to be plenty of bits and bobs to be getting on with today as I say I've got to get all the units lined up got to get the 12 volt compressor fridge out as well get the worktop on get the cut out for the under mounted sink the other cut for the gas hob things like that so I say there's going to be plenty of stuff for me to be cracking on with today whether I'll get the full entire kitchen finished in this episode or not I'm not sure but there's only one way to find out. So, first things first, I'm going to go get some tools out, get some safety gear out, get cracked on, and let's see how far we get done for the day. Right guys, so that's the kitchen units, pretty much all in place and lined up and level across the top. I've got the first fit of the gas in as well, that's the pipe going down to the underslung tank. And I've got the first copper pipe in for the water heater as well. I'm going to run a couple more gas pipes because the oven, the brand new Thetford duplex oven, is going to be housed within this 50cm kitchen unit. And in the top of this unit, again, this is going to be basically the cooking unit. Because on the top I've got a brand new, again, Thetford spin floor for burner gas hob as well. So as I say, that's going to be going into the worktop on the top with the black Thetford duplex oven underneath as well. And obviously that one's also going to have the sink in when all the worktop's in place. So that's the unit's pretty much assembled, lined up, pretty much le level and even as well. So I'm going to get that hob back out. Start lining up this worktop, get some drawings drew on the underneath for where I can do the cutouts for the sink and for the hob. And then we'll get the brand new 12 volt compressor fridge out as well. So it's coming along quite nicely, let's keep cracking on. Right guys, and that is the 12 volt Swan fridge that I've just unboxed as well. This is roughly the position it's going to be going in. This is a full 12 or 24 volt compressor fridge. It's not an absorption type, it's not a 240 volt household one, although it is a household size. And as you can see, if we open it up, as I say, it's a full size, brand new fridge with a full freezer compartment in the top as well. So it wasn't cheap at all, but it's the nice finishing touches that can make the conversion. I really like the colour of this as well, and I think I'm going to use this colour for some of the splashback tiling, and maybe paint the back bedroom area as well. Just so it all flows in with the same colour scheme as well. So that's quite a really nice fridge that, it's uh, actually nicer than what I thought it was going to be when I saw it online. And if you're looking for any of the things that I'm going to be fitting within this kitchen build, the oven, the fridge, the hob, sink, gas connections, anything like that, just check the description below of the video. I'll put links out to eBay to all the bits that I've bought. Although I'll be honest, the 12 volt fridges do seem to be in very, very short supply at the moment. This was the last one that I managed to buy in this colour. But they'll be coming back into stock soon as well. So check the description below for any of the bits that I'm fitting. And let's get cracked on and get all this put together. Right, so now all of the units are in place. And the worktops roughly cut down to size as well. I'm now going to start marking out the area that's going to be cut in for the undermounted sink. 
Now the best way for this to make sure that I'm going to be cutting between the frame of the actual uh, cabinet itself, I'm just going to mount while hold the sink underneath the unit. Basically holding it up against there and getting my hand in the drain hole and just drawing all around the inside of the sink just so I've got a nice outline that I can then cut out on the worktop itself and it'll mean that everything's nice and square within the unit as well. So I'm going to crack on, draw that template, then I'll take the worktop back off and start cutting around for that and that'll get the sink pretty much mounted. Right, so I've got the hole cut for the undermounted sink, so now I've made some markings out for where the 50 centimetre kitchen unit sits. And as you can see, the wind's trying to blow it away, but I've got a Thetford template here for the hob. So I'm going to cut this template down, get it lined up, and get this square cut out for the main 50 centimetre hob as well. Then we'll be able to get the worktop back in and start getting everything fitted to it. So I'm going to get these markings for the template done and get this cut out now as well. Right guys, so it's the following day, and I made some really good progress yesterday, as you can see. All the units are in place, the fridge is pretty much in place. I've got the cutout for the hob, and for the underslung, undermounted uh, kitchen sink as well. So I'm going to be cracking on doing a few more bits and bobs today. Today I'm going to be cutting in a bit of an access panel into the side of this unit, because when the hob and the oven get mounted in here, I'm going to have to have some sort of access to be able to get in to do the gas connections because as you can see I've put a cut into this 50 centimeter door and this door is going to get permanently secured to the front of this cabinet housing. So by having a little access panel on the side it means I'll be able to pull the fridge out, get in, do the gas connections for the hob, for the oven, things like that. Also means if there's any maintenance needed in the future, it's going to be nice and easy and accessible rather than having to strip the entire thing back down again. So that's one of the jobs for today. I'm going to get a couple more of the kitchen cupboard uh, doors on as well. Maybe look at getting the tap mounted, but unfortunately, me being me, I've totally forgot to order one of the main parts that I'm going to need, which is the BSP to John Guest converters for the tap. And I can't get everything fully finished in the final places until those have arrived because obviously I'm still going to need in behind this area to get all the water pipes fed down and the John Guest pipes up. So that's probably going to be next weekend because I've just ordered those early today so they'll probably arrive during the week. 
So next week I should be able to get the tap in place and get the full kitchen finished off. But as I say, there's still plenty of jobs to be cracking on with in the meantime today. I've done a bit of conti board cut down there for the fridge to be able to box that in. I'm going to cut another sheet down as well, just again to put on the inside there as well. So, as there's plenty more jobs to crack on with, so let's get some safety gear back out, some tools back out, and get cracked on for the day. Right, so I've been cracking on, I've got the conti board cut down to box the fridge in and in the meantime I've also taken the entire kitchen unit all apart again to get into the 50mm that's going to house both the hob on the top and the oven underneath and I say I need some sort of access panel to get in to do all the gas fittings so there I've just put a quick little flip down access panel that's going to give easy access to where the gas fittings are for both the hob and the oven and then when that's in place just flip the panel back up and obviously when the other section of conti boards pushed right against it as well that'll still give a nice neat full finish and you won't even be able to see the access panel unless you actually need in it for some reason but again because this unit's going to house most of the gas appliances the hob and the oven the unit itself is going to have a dropout hole and i'm now just going to drill a dropout hole straight down through the floor just in case there were any issues with the gas of which there shouldn't be there should never be any issues with the gas but just in case, safety first, it's always advisable to have dropout holes wherever you have gas appliances. So I've already got one underneath where all of the manifold is. So now I'm going to put another one here, right beneath where the 50mm cabinet sits. And as I say, that will provide a dropout hole just in case there are any issues with either the hob or the oven. Of which, as I say, there shouldn't be. But just in case, safety first. So I'll get the hole saw out, get cracked on, drill a hole through down for that as well and I'll also probably put a hole in the floor for where the fridge is going to be going because the compressor fridges do still need air ventilation coming through across the back of the system it helps with the cooling of the system itself so again if there's a dropout hole in the floor it will just naturally draw colder air up and then it'll vent out the side where I'm going to put a little vent in the side of the conti board as well so I'm going to crack on get some holes drilled through the flooring then we'll get this unit back in place, get the pipes back into the cabinet, start getting them clipped on and secured. And there'll be another little job ticked off. So there's the doors on the kitchen units as well and the hinges that I've put on are actually soft close hinges so if you just push the door shut as you can see it just bounces a little and then softly closes away as well and again if you're after these sort of hinges doors anything like that check the description below there'll be links going to eBay for everything that I bought in this conversion so now the doors are on I'm going to fit in a couple of the concealed type handles these are pop-in, pop-out uh, door lock handles as well. They're concealed, so when the door's closed, it sits pretty much flush with the door. Pop it out, and that'll give a little handle to open the doors as well. Again, there'll be links for these in the description below as well. So I'm going to get the hole saw out, drill a couple of holes, get these fitted in, then that'll be another job ticked off.
Right guys, so that'll do it for this week's episode. I was hoping to get the full kitchen finished this weekend, but as I say, because I don't have the BSP to the John Guest SpeedFit connectors for the tap, I'm still going to have to take all the work top off when they arrive next week. So next weekend I should be able to get it pretty much all finished off now. But as you can see, I've made a hell of a good start. I've got the hob in place, I've got the hole cut out for the undermounted sink that again will get fitted after the tap's in place because the worktop needs to come up so I can get into all of the pipe work behind the cupboard. But as I say, all the units are in place. I've roughly loosely fit the oven in the uh, 50 centimeter cabinet door as well. But that again still needs fully securing and again I'll do that next week when I'm putting everything together in the final finish of the kitchen fit. But as I say I'm quite happy and pleased with how it's turning out so far. I'm liking the look of the fridge as well. And as I say everything is pretty much all brand new in this kitchen as well. Very very expensive but it is what it is. I'm trying to make it a really nice top end conversion. And that involves having to spend quite a lot of money. So, I hope you found this episode useful. As I say, if you're looking for any of the bits that are fitted, ranging from anything from the cupboard doors and hinges through to the oven, the hob, the fridge, things like that, have a look in the description below. I'll link out to eBay where I've bought pretty much all of the bits that are being fitted within this conversion. So check the description below for all the links that are being fitted. And as I say, if you, found, if you made it all the way through to the end of the episode, give the video a good old thumbs up as well. If you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button. You can always unsubscribe in the future as well. As I say, it's just a case of clicking the little button below and as I say, give a good old thumbs up as well. And hopefully, I'll see you on next week's episode when hopefully I'll be able to get all of the rest of the kitchen fully finished off. So, thanks for watching this episode. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Thumbs up. Cheers.